G'day and welcome back for more of my grand tour. I'm here hiding in an asteroid, well, relatively close to the alien planet. And today what I need to do is get closer to Titan, as well as probably try and convert this mostly, or at least as much as I can, to a large grid ship. The advantage of a large grid ship in this situation is going to be that I can have a refinery, an assembler and all that sort of stuff and have it as one ship and not need to do the docking undocking, which seems to contribute to the bugs I was experiencing last time. Though if I experience those bugs again, I've been told of another alternative, which I will have to try. So time to get a few things done. Now, one entertaining thing that's happened since last time is that a few people have started trying to find me and I see a little marker there 25 kilometers away which is disturbingly close considering last time all I gave away was the location of my mining base down on the planet so perhaps oh it's switching on and off <laughs> I wonder if that's deliberate or I wonder if that wasn't meant to turn off Ooh. anyway I'm not gonna go investigate that just yet. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can put a large grid converted advanced rotor on here. Now, the idea that I'm thinking is if I can put that on here, then I can place a, well, I can place, ooh, I can place an assembler and put a large grid ore detector on here. That's probably the most useful thing. One of the things that I'm afraid of, given I've come up here in a small grid ship, is that I won't be able to get enough grids to actually build a large grid ship because I didn't really take all the time I could have to prep things down on the planet. So with the advanced rotor built, what I need to do now, having gotten rid of the top as well, is place down a large grid rotor part which is not that one it's that one and then I'm gonna have to very gingerly fly towards it and try and attach myself to it so what I'll need to do for that is have attach for this ready to spam and then I'm gonna need to turn my gyros on Turn my thrusters on, that should be it. Thrusters on. Oops, not F1. Thrusters on. Gyros on. Oh dear. Why aren't you moving? Oh wait. Nope. Oh, because that's not the full group. Alright, now I should be able to get in position. Oh no, 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 no. That's right, I go up very fast. Oh, that's. Hang on. I am going to get rid of those extra thrusters. I don't need these two bonus thrusters here. <laughs> Looks like a few people are on here um, who have been looking for me. No, brat. Get back here. <laughs> I don't think they realize how close that they are to me. Um, I did set that to attach, didn't I? Yeah, it's a set to attach. All right, let's try it again. Let's try. Take number two. Oh, I've attached. Cool. All right, sweet. That's what I needed. So I think I need the assembler so that then I can place a, um, so I can build the detector components that I need to build the large grid ore detector. Then I can try and find some cobalt along my way to Titan. Okay, it looks like I'm just short of displays. That's pretty good because they can easily be made by the survival kit. Uh, do I have enough stuff for a drill? It'd be nice to stick a drill on the front. One of the things some people have probably already realized is that I have isolated my survival kit with only small grit, with only the small tubes connected to it, which can make collecting materials from it a bit of a pain because you have to right click on this bit, go to inventory and then transfer it through this way because the components are often too big to pass through those small tubes. Okay. Assembler up. Let's build a basic refinery if I've got the parts. I'll just slap an ore detector down here for now. All right. While that's processing, let's just check on my power situation. It's okay-ish for now. 
let's just collect a little bit of stone so we're not too poor on resources and so that I've started any of that production and if I get if I get a little bit tight on power what I can do is I can use any of this stone mining to produce the parts for some more batteries and just spam building fresh batteries to try and get enough power to get by because I don't think my solar panel is going to do much with the position of the refinery and the assembler above it but it was just a little safety net that I wanted to put on there since it's actually been about a week since I recorded. And detector is up. Now I can start flying from asteroid to asteroid on my way to Titan, hoping to find enough cobalt. So the reason I need cobalt is I want to be able to build a large grid hydrogen ship, preferably while I'm in space. If I can get enough cobalt, I can get enough grids for the hydrogen thrusters because hydrogen thrusters need quite a few metal grids. I think one of the first blocks I should try and get on here is a genuine refinery. The reason I'm thinking that is that if I put one of these big refineries down and I find stuff like platinum or gold or basically that sort of stuff that I'm going to need, that I'm going to need in order to build jump drives, in order to build ion thrusters, it would be really handy to start processing it straight away. And I don't think I'm too far from being able to build one. I think I'm going to need to find some cobalt, maybe? No, I've got enough grids. In fact, I may be able to pretty much build one as soon as I've got enough steel. I'm just short on plate and a few computers. Let me just check something else. Power efficiency. What do I need for that? Maybe I should do them first. Ah. I'll get the uh, refinery up and running and then I'll get power efficiency modules on everything just until I've got some better resource for power, which could come. Oh, there's some platinum. Look at that. <laughs> and some ice too. That's very handy. So I could get a hydrogen engine up and running here. I am going to hang around at this asteroid for a little while. It looks like I'll try and get the ice and I'll try and get some platinum refining once I get the refinery up and running. Yeah, nice. I could not have planned that better. And the best part is, I didn't plan that at all. It just happened. I mean, actually, I could have planned it better. Had there been some, uh, had there been some uranium on this asteroid, that would have been better than platinum. Platinum's handy, but it's not going to give me more power. The ice will. And I think what I'm going to do for the little while at the start here is I'm going to spend my time getting the parts for that refinery done so that then I can refine that platinum, but I'm going to get a large... Ooh. I was going to say I'm going to get a large grid hydrogen tank. But do they require... No? They don't require grids. Yeah, I've got a large grid hydrogen tank, some high O2H2, an O2H2 gen on here, and I'll get a... Hmm. And I'll try and get a hydrogen engine running so I can charge the batteries off this ice that's in front of me. So at the moment I'm trying to work out the best way to do the things that I need to do and struggling to decide. <laughs> there are so many options for how I can approach my problems at the moment and I am... Well, I'm spoiled for choice. I know I need platinum, I know I need gold, I know I need ice, I know I need power. And I'm not sure what I should spend my efforts on first. I do think that getting this refinery up and then getting power efficiency modules on all of the refinery and the assembler is a good first step. It is going to be very awkward moving this thing around with the refinery attached up there, but hopefully I won't need to do that for too long. If I get lucky and find some gold, I'll then be able to at least have a decent chance of building some small grid ion thrusters, which would allow me to throw all of my hydrogen over to power production, which would be great because I'd still be able to move around even if I can't move around fast. Obviously power is a big concern for me. So having power efficiency modules for the time being and then removing them later is probably the smartest way to go so that I can hopefully not run myself completely dry of power. And let's cut you off because you're not in a smart spot because I'm going to get rid of the basic refinery now and grind this sucker down. 
Because I've now got two power efficiency modules on the big refinery, and I'm pretty sure at that point it uses less power than the basic does. So maybe I'll just weld this back up and check. Yeah, it does use bless. So better to get rid of this and save my power. I'm not super worried about speed because I'm processing the stone basically as fast as I can mine it, but I am worried about power. And with four on here, I have 112 kilowatts. Oh yeah. Uh, I could probably, I am liking being able to access the assembler directly. So I may not put four of these on there, but I will put a third. <laughs> uh, I gotta admit, the chat is a lot more entertaining. <laughs> and that is a very nice thing to say. Thanks, Sakdoth. Hopefully you see the video and see that I <laughs> do very much appreciate that when people... Well, I very much appreciate how generally nice the Space Engineers community is. There are so many people who want to help others enjoy this game that we all find so much fun. Oh, 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 right, my battery. Okay, how much platinum have I got? That's not very much. Let's just clear a bit more of this rock face out of the way. I think the platinum might be exposed on the inside of this cavern. But I think it's also going to be very difficult for me to fly into said cavern. It's hard enough for me to fly on the outside of this rock. Well, I'm pretty much out of cargo space, so I'm going to head on to another asteroid. Marking stuff as I go, not necessarily because I expect to come back here, but just in case I do need something that I haven't found elsewhere. It'd be nice to know that I've got some places that I could come back to, and the doubling back could be an entertaining little trip, as it will bring me closer to where people... <laughs> may expect me to be, depending on where I'm up to in publishing the videos of this. Now, where on earth was Titan? Obviously, there is a small downside of going large grid, which is it's big. Uh, small downside of going big. Uh, the small downside of going big is that I'm going to be a little bit easier to see. Hopefully, in the vastness of space, not that easy. In fact, I may take a fairly circuitous route toward Titan, I think. Line up roughly off to the side of that asteroid. Nash damn is off. Let's get some speed up. So in terms of platinum that I need, I don't actually need a huge amount for the ion thrusters. With 0.13 per thruster component, I'd need 80 times that for each small ion thruster on large grid. So that's like Nine kilos-ish, approximately. Or is it ten? I need a calculator. It's, it's something not particularly much. So I'd really technically be able to get away with something around 60 to 70 kilograms at a bare minimum. It'd be very slow and painful, but I'd be able to get away with it. So I might actually have somewhere near enough. The refinery's got... 10,000 kilos, and it's already produced 2.5 of the ingots. So it's... There's a chance. I'm certainly glad I picked up some there anyway. Because as I said earlier, even if I have to go large, small grid ion thrusters, that'll still provide me some ability to move even if I run out of hydrogen. Which is the sort of thing that I sometimes do, and I would like to <laughs> protect myself against my own stupidity. Oh. Business shipment. I think I know how to capture those. That is seriously tempting. Uh, let's hide in the asteroid. I think I'll throw a couple of clones at it and see if I can... <laughs> see if I can take this thing on. I don't have any magnesium. So I don't have any ability to fight this thing. But if I can get there with a grinder, which I think I can with business shipments. I don't mind making the Amtex people angry at me. It'd be totally worth it if I can get the ion thrusters. And with this kind of scenario, I'm going to use every trick I know to try and <laughs> speed this process up. If I could capture that, I would have my large grid ship ready to go in no time. Silver! 
Ooh, I can make a med bay. Yeah. I think I also need silver for reactor components. Yes, I do. So I should grab some while I'm here. Not sure I'll worry about grabbing the iron, but I will grab some silver. However, I am going to hide myself and go after that business shipment and investigate it. I would have preferred a private sale because they're even easier to take. Oh, wait. I think it might call in help. Ooh. Calls in help. I'm in trouble. Oh, I'm going to take a chance. Uh, let's drop what I'm carrying. Just got grinder, drill and welder. This is a long way to travel if I have to, but this thing is friendly to me, so I should be able to get within its gun range. I've got no bottles on me, so I will respawn with exactly the tools I'm carrying. Uh, piracy, I do love you. <laughs> now, if something is about to happen related to the economy update that I'm not aware of, that would be because I haven't done a lot with the economy update, to be honest. Oh, this will be great to steal. It's got all the ions I need. Oh, oh, I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. Let's get this thing. Oh. Am I actually inside? Or I just lagged inside. I don't think I'm actually inside. Okay, now I should be able to get through. No, no, there's no gun in here, is there? I think it's going to shoot me as soon as I take over this thing. I need to remember where on earth the remote control is. I should also probably check on my faction standing to MTEX. Mystic excavators. Minus 100. Okay, I got heaps to play with. That means... Disable the, tur <laughs> the turrets. Oh, stop doing that. Goodbye. Of course, the challenge with this becomes if I then want to do any missions for these guys, they're probably not going to be super keen on me. Uh, I think given the scenario, it's worth it, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is this is so cheap and cheesy. But it's so necessary. <laughs> oh, this is going to be such a big boost. It's going to make things so much quicker. All right. Where on earth is the remote control on this thing. Is that it next to those blast door blocks? I think it could be. And I think I know exactly why it's beside the blast door blocks. Because they're going to take a long time to grind through and you're going to lose a lot of standings trying to do that. Oh, I should disable these antenna. One of the best parts about this thing, it's got all the grids I need for, well, it's got a large grid cargo container. So I'm not going to have to collect cobalt to get one of them. So aside from the ion thrusters, this thing's got a lot of the stuff I need. And there's our remote control. Goodbye. This ship is mine. Let's get all those parts that I just dropped in space. And take this on home. That was the cheapest pirating ever. I think... I kind of feel like it would be good if... It was a bit more difficult to do that. Because <laughs> I've now got everything I need. I feel kind of bad. I feel like I should have gone to one of the stations and done missions instead and bought a ship. Hmm. Guess I'll have to do a playthrough again like that. But for this time, I'm kind of happy. This is going to speed this whole process up a fair bit. And as I was sort of putting myself on the clock for this... That is a good, good thing. All right, that's all the components. Let's fly on home and hope nobody notices me. But I am going to be grinding this. Oh, silver will give me a better tool. Yes. I was just thinking, I am going to be grinding this down, so I want better grinder to do this quickly. Yes. Speed up my piracy. Oh, yeah. Now, although this thing has given me quite the little bootstrapping with the ion thrusters, it doesn't give me absolutely everything I need. I still have to get a jump drive, which means I still need to go and mine a decent amount of gold and silver. So my problems are not over yet. I still can't make it to the other planets in any reasonable time frame. So I'm stuck around here for the time being, even though this piracy has been very, very successful. 
Now, how much do MTEX hate me? Oh, I was very close to them going nasty to me. Very close. I might have to do a mission or two for them just so that I don't end up hated. Now get ready for some grinding and merge block shenanigans because I want to keep those batteries. The batteries on here are actually pretty highly charged. Stored power 2.7, 2.7, 2.7, yeah. I don't want to lose them. I quite like the cockpit style in here. I'm almost tempted just to take this segment out of the ship and then rebuild on from the front of it. Oh, the Mystic Excavator's gonna hate me as I take over the rest of their ship, aren't they? Oh well, they're gonna hate me. That's the price I have to pay. Because I have to grind down so much more of this ship. I can't just take it over. I have to actually keep grinding all of their blocks. So they're going to absolutely hate me before I can use this. My other alternative would be to just fly this around and use it as a tug for my bit until I can make my own, but I think I'm just going to have to wear the cost of their hatred of me. Now, what I think I'm going to do is something I don't normally. I'm going to keep my cheapy grinder on me as well so that I've got both available to me. It takes up a little bit more space in your inventory with 20 liters, but at least it'll give me the ability to carefully grind stuff if I need to as well. So, character tools, put my elite winder, elite winder, elite welder there, elite grinder there and regular grinder there. You know what? I am going to use this habitation module from the business shipment. I really like its arrangement and I'm going to stick with it. I really like some aspects of its arrangement. I am going to need to take control of these batteries, which means getting them below that hack line. Oh, I'm using the wrong grinder for the start of that. Okay, one battery is mine. Get the battery on the other side. Cool. Now to cut off these bits, because this big solar sail, it's going. It has its function, but Realistically, a big solar sail is just asking for me to be spotted. So I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to keep the large cargo container because I quite like it. And then I'm going to figure out how to put all the functional stuff on here. So I'll start with this little tail bit as my core hull and grow from there. I think also the big solar sail is a problem if I'm going to be using this ship to mine as well as using it to fly around in. Which is kind of what I want. I want a one. I want a ship that does everything. I don't want to have to mess around with multiple ships because the connectors are a bit of an issue. So I Energy just. Critical. I just want to be able to do, at least in space, all the stuff with one ship. Oh, yeah. I think an advantage of me taking this thing on is that. It doesn't actually cost me all of the PCU. I should probably try and merge block the thrusters onto the core. Oh, no, I won't worry about it. I could go and be that tricky, but that's not me. I'm just not normally like that. I'm too lazy. <laughs> I was just thinking, oh, wouldn't it be funny if someone spotted me doing this and came and followed me and chased me off? <laughs> Because I would have to, to get out of here at any decent pace. I'd have to ditch my refinery assembler and have to leave this whole thing that I've just pirated behind. <laughs> that would actually be kind of cool. I'd be devastated, but it would be kind of funny. I think the first steps for this grid are to re-merge block those batteries that are up, up there and down here. Or perhaps even just... I could leave them where they are and see if I can work around them actually. But I will contemplate merge blocking them and moving them somewhere else if I need to. Think about where I'm going to put the refinery on, where I'm going to put the assembler on, move them from the other ship, get thrust in all directions and get myself so I can get out of here if I need to without losing everything. Um, refinery, how am I going to do the refinery? Maybe underneath in place of this oxygen tank would be the way to go. I'm not losing faction standing, even grinding something that I know is theirs. Interesting. 
Cool. Energy low. Can't complain at that. Oof. <laughs> the lag spikes whenever anyone joins the server. Uh, then I can fit a drill array to the front of this. Once I'm good. Initially it'll be just like a couple of drills and I will still have to <laughs> uh, be careful in the way I move around. Ooh. No, I don't think that will work. Oh, I could sacrifice having upgrade modules and squeeze an assembler in in lots of places. But do I want to sacrifice having upgrade modules on it? I probably could, to, to be honest. It's tempting. It's very tempting. Uh, let's get back to my cockpit so I can get some fuel, some oxygen, and some power. I think I'm going to have to go refinery like this. So that I've got access to all of its upgrade modules. However, not that way. The other way around. I would prefer to have its cargo access ports closer to the ship, like that. Yeah, that's going to be better. Then I think what I can do is pop in a conveyor junction. And then I will lose one upgrade slot for the assembler, but that's not a tragedy. By placing it onto that conveyor. In fact, I don't even need that conveyor junction if I do it this way. Get rid of this ramp. Pop my assembler in like that. And then put a conveyor corner or junction or whatever I decide to put in there. That'll give me three upgrade modules on the assembler, which isn't too bad. It'll give me all four on the refinery, which is great. Yeah. This is how we're doing it. That's not too much bigger than it already was. It is getting chunky, but it's a manageable size. Now I just got to figure out where on earth I'm going to put all my thrusters and where I'm going to put a hydrogen tank. I probably want a hydrogen tank on the front here, to be honest. Let's just build some scaffolding to keep these batteries in place. As I suspect, the best spot for a hydrogen tank is going to be right here. Right in line. Nice big tank. Because then along the top, or even continuing along here, place my O2H2 gens. Put an O2H2 gen in there. That'll hold that battery in place. And pipe all that up. Then, for backup power, go an engine straight on it. Yeah. All sticking down the same amount. This battery is now held in place properly. If I want to, I could put another O2H2 gen up here just to make sure I've got enough production for everything. And that might give me some more mounting points to place the thrusters. And that's the battery cell done, so I can get rid of this stuff. What I might do with the little ship is connect it up to this thing, make it into a hydrogen powered mining ship. So I've got an alternative mining little rig to having to fly this thing whole, all the way through an asteroid and risking damaging it. I think that may be a smart move. One of the nice things about carrying both of the grinders on me is that I find, particularly with the higher grinding efficiencies, it's really easy to dump stuff on the ground when you're grinding something big like a hydrogen tank or a refinery. And if I've got the little one, I can usually fill my inventory much more safely without grinding the block till breaking point. And on a multiplayer server where your items could get deleted before you get a chance to pick them up, that's quite useful to do, to protect all your stuff. I've done something quite risky here. I've transferred all of my goodies over to this thing before it can even effectively move. So, like I was saying before, if someone finds me, I'm in a little spot of bother. Because I can't run away with all my goods. So I think what I will do now is focus on functionality. <laughs> Oops. Before I jump on to anything more advanced. But now it's time to check on what Steve's been up to. So I've been using one of my alternate accounts to log into the server at the location of my first base. 
What I first did was move Steve there in his drop pod, and then built up a cryopod and a couple of other bits so that I could pop on whenever I liked to see what people have been up to. When I first arrived, it turned out that someone had actually beaten me to it and had arrived before me and had left their name on the LCD, so I decided to make the LCD screen a bit of a visitor's log. And people have been writing down the changes that they made to the base, along with their names and sometimes their factions as well. While I was jumping in one day, I even managed to run into someone and then jump on top of their head and stand there for a while since I think they were experiencing quite nasty lag. So I believe it was Eisen's head I was standing on, and Eisen also left quite a cool little message on a data pad. All is now quiet, his throne long cold. Worked like a slave, then left all alone. Steady in duty, silent he cries, for his friends to return, and then roam the skies. Which is sort of fitting for Steve, I guess. But really, the most amazing thing that was built here <laughs> is this giant holographic spinning splitsy logo. And if you're the person who put that there, could you please send me the blueprint of that? Because that is just epic and awesome. And I really would find it hilarious to set that up somewhere just to mess with Capac at some point. Because, <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> it's such a massive beacon. There've been lights added, there've been decoys added, there've been all sorts of things added to this. But yeah, that, that one kind of takes the cake. I'm sure there will be more interactions with other people as this series goes on. In fact, I know there have been because I've already recorded a little bit ahead. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I, and maybe even Steve, will see you then.